All right, guys, welcome back to my Procreate tutorial number three. This one is going to cover some of the different tools and customizations that you can do within the program. A little bit more advanced for, you know, people who already kind of have the, the hang of painting and all that. So let's get right into it. Let's click on our pancake smiley face here and take a look at what we can do. The top left hand side, we've got these four different tools next to the gallery, four different icon tabs. Um, let's kind of go through and take a look at all, all the different options. We've got an import image under the insert tab. We've got import image. You can take a picture. You can paste from the clipboard. So let's, let's import an image from my photos. Um, my camera roll. Let's pick the cat that I'm kind of working on, right? So it gives us the cat and it has this selection of them. We can twist them around, make them smaller. Let's say, let's say he's got this flying little cat on his mind. Uh, this is within the selection tool right now. As you can see, the blue selects this fourth tab. And on the left hand side, you've got all these cool little options. If you lock with the magnet tool, that means it keeps its shape. So you can take that off and you can kind of squeeze and move the the cat around and kind of skew it so I'm gonna hit the undo once hit it twice to get it back to its original little shape that I wanted you can rotate it uh, precisely you know a certain set amount of uh, degrees by clicking the circle uh, to counter uh, to rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise you can flip it horizontally you can flip it vertically uh, you can kind of stretch it all the way across the screen, but I'll undo that to fill in as much as possible. And then you can hit X to delete it, I believe. Um, all right, we're happy with it. Let's click the little triangle or the selection tool. Now you can see it put the imported image on a completely separate layer. That is perfectly fine for me. I'm going to keep it there. My little streaming app thingy crashed, so I have to kind of regain my train of thought but I, I'm okay with it being on a separate layer as it'll be kind of part of the image but it'll be in its own little thought bubble so let's keep the imported image there that's how you import images we've got all sorts of canvas options where you can flip the canvas horizontally vertically copy the canvas into the clipboard and then uh, you have all this metadata which basically just tells you how large the file is the kind of uh, video quality presets we have obviously the share tab where you can export the video and I'll show you at the very end when we're done with the tutorial I'll show you what the export video will look like so that'll be cool to check out we have devices such as wireless uh, tablet pens that you can purchase I own none of these I only paint with my fingers and I feel like you know the results speak for themselves it's still pretty good I probably will prefer it to using a uh, a pen just because I've seen some bad reviews and I don't know I guess people don't really like the way that it it does what it does we've got preferences here I turned on the option to be able to see my cursor and this is really handy for using a larger stroke you know with very precise edges you can kind of see how far um, how far the stroke will go and will you go outside the edge or not you can also change it to a right-handed interface. I am not, I'm a lefty, so I'm gonna keep it on the left-hand side. And that just moves the tools over, kind of, again, mirrors it. We've got um, eyedropper delay, which is 0.30 seconds, half a second, and uh, selection mask visibility. So I'll show you guys what how to eyedrop very easy and then we have the help button and it just talks about what's new and all that so to eye drop or, or pick up a color you click and hold on the screen for me it's half a second and half of the circle is consisted of the color you're about to pick up and the bottom half of the circle is the cover that the color that you originally put your finger over so if I click hold um, over this blue or uh, over this uh, tan color you see how it's tan if I click and hold over that then it becomes white no wait that's I think I feel like um, oh yeah, yeah no that's the color that you had originally not the color that you held your finger over so if you look at the top right uh, the little circle where the color picker is this right here you know the color option you see how it's white so when I um, 
go over the tan color, it'll change to tan. If I start at the red, the bottom is still white because that's what I originally had. So that makes a lot more sense. Hopefully I, that didn't confuse you too much. Um, all right, moving along. We finished this tab. Let's move on to the adjustments. We've already covered opacity, but just to make sure that we're on the correct layer, which is the smiley face, we'll go back to adjustments and we can change the blur settings and swiping just as we did to kind of lower the opacity of the layer, you can swipe the intensity of the blurring. So if this was an object really far away or really close, so close that it's out of focus, you know, you can, you can use the little the blur um, effects to kind of show that. Then there's also a sharpen option which does you know the same kind of um, slider option. You can also do noise and this just increases the noise. It, there's some cool possibilities with the noise uh, noise slider and I might show you guys in a future video. Uh, we also have hue, saturation, and brightness and it puts it in order from hue being at the very top you can change the hue of the painting Let's actually change it just so that we're making some sort of progress on the face. Uh, if I move it all the way out here, do the colors get, yeah, I don't really like that. I like these reddish ones more. And then I can change the saturation, adding a lot of color or making it, you know, go all the way to, to grayscale. So let's add a little bit of color. And at the bottom, the slider controls the brightness and darkness. And uh, we'll make it just slightly darker. Click the wand again, pops up color balance. Here you can you know, shift the yellows. At the left hand side you have highlights, you have midtones, and you have the shadows. So you can adjust each one exactly as you, know, as you wish. If you want to make the highlights say more green. No, no, we don't want to make it more green. We, we want to add a little bit of Dude, whatever <laughs> yeah sure make it like pancake red and then you know the shadows we can do more blue more purple and actually less purple it's more blue and green sure let's let's go with that all right and then this toggles the preview on and off I think if I'm not mistaken yeah you click and hold it and it'll kind of take off what you just did and then as you let it go it'll it'll add it and I don't want to add it so I'm gonna click the X and it'll undo all of that uh, and then we have color or uh, curves curves are a really common thing if you've ever used Photoshop you have you know kind of your uh, highlight ends and and all that and you can you can change the amount of red green and blue within it if you don't know what you're doing with this uh, with this adjuster like the curve curve setting then I suggest you know you can play around with it but that might ruin your painting so clicking on the adjustments tab you can also recolor and then wow this is actually really interesting I've never used this setting but as you can see when you scroll over it kind of shows you how much of what you're selecting will be affected and then you can use the slider to select more of the color and we can change the color to Wow, that's actually really handy. I, I feel like for some of the, you know, you can use it for some really cool stuff. So, again, using recolor, check that out. You just kind of select which color you wanna, you wanna affect with it. Um, okay, cool, great. I learned something new too. Uh, then we have the selection tool. I love the selection tool. I used to not use it for a really long time, but it actually makes everything so much better. So with the selection tool, you can, you know, just kind of uh, stab where <laughs> around the screen where you want the selection to go. Once you made the full circle, you click, you ta uh, tap on the beginning location and it'll connect it. Um, we want to, here you can do plus minus to add or take away some of the stuff. We can click on the arrow now and, well, that's not it. But yeah, we have, a, oh, I, I wanna undo that so the selection comes back. Bring back the selection. All right. So with the selection, you can click and drag 
and uh, it'll cut out exactly what you want. It works just as it does in Photoshop, so if you know if that's what you need, there you go. It's available. You can you can change the size. We can make our smiley a little bit more round, and um, I'll probably end up doing that. So say you know we want to change it. Let's toggle the line art off. Uh, it's in the way since we changed this size and we can go in and erase everything that was around the smiley which we didn't want you know all the little extras and then I can soften my eraser by lowering the opacity the size and just go along the edges and clean them up again these are you know all these techniques you can apply to painting any object and uh, that's what I'll often do I'll clean up ed edges with a soft brush or you know with a actual paintbrush just using the similar color if it had you know some some busy background or something like that now I'm gonna get rid of the smiley face line art don't worry I'll, I'll I know what pupils you know are supposed to look like for this thing so I already had that idea in my head alright um, the selection tool is still great remember we can we can flip horizontally and vertically if we wanted to we can skew it by if you click on just the corner it'll distort the entire image from that corner so check that out you know you can kind of like make it sort of 3d even like it's uh, on a wall we all undo that and uh, now let's take a look at different brushes and I'll cover this along with different erasers before the end of the video. So clicking again on the brush setting, you get you got this wonderful new tab which opens up. And at the top left, you've got sketching. So that's all, all your different pencils. You've got all these different ink options. The painting tab and the round brush, I would say, is my favorite by far. Uh, then we've got airbrush. These are really good for softer effects. Textures, don't use these often. You've got abstract. Here I'll select one and kind of show you. Look at that, like really intense. Different change, you know. You've got all these different. Uh, if you swipe to the right, you've got charcoal to choose from. Uh, elements, stuff like driven snow, clouds. You know, the clouds come in handy. For somebody who does not want to spend hours and hours trying to figure out how clouds are are painted, it's also really good for smoke smoke effects if used, you know, properly. So yeah, we've got our cloud um, spray paint. You got things like big drips, or you have actual brush type spray paint that you could use. So that's cool. You've got touch-up stuff like short hair, rough skin textures, old skin textures. I uh, don't use those often either, just because it's it's really visible. You know when you do, like it's re it's really easy to see that. Got that pretty cool effect. It'd be really good for like camouflage or something. You have the lumina luminance tab, which has things like broken light, so you can kind of take a look at. At what that would look like I'll undo that just because it's kind of annoying then there's you know things like nebula a little flare swipe to the right once more we've got in the industrial tab this is really you know texture heavy stuff that you can use on all sorts of machinery and all that other organic or like non-organic material and then the organic tab which is you know things like bamboo and hemp reeds and all those other brushes we also have a water tab sort of for water um, like watercolor effects custom tab which are custom brushes that you can adjust and you know fix to your liking then you have the final tab which is the pocket and these are all the different brushes uh, featured in the pocket procreate the mobile version of the app so go to our custom brush and um, I can click on the brush and it will pop up all these other crazy settings this is going to be a lot to you know take in you can um, 
orient the brush to the iPad screen, you know, use the stamp feature, change the size limits. You have to play around with this to get exactly how you want. And I do not use it. I use the standard painting round brush. That's just my favorite go-to brush. I use it for everything, for shading, coloring, line art, pretty much exclusively just that brush. Um, what else? Eraser works the same way. Double tap, we can get the eraser to, you know, use its own. Uh, as you can see, the cursor kind of shows the size of the eraser and what kind of brush it's being um, given. And you can change it to a really solid. If I go to the airbrush, change it to a hard brush. Now I've got a circle and it's fully solid. So if I go to my smiley face, and kind of cut that out see it it does what you know I expect it to uh, the smudge tool works in the same exact way so you can you can smear with the exact brush that you want and you know that's good for getting effects like like hair or just melting and I don't, I don't know I mean I'm sure people will come up with you know whatever whatever they need you can use the tools with like a creative approach to kind of tailor it to your needs. And that is it for now. And then in the final video, guys, we are going to take a look at just a few different color processes and stuff that you can do to quickly uh, make the painting, you know, to, yeah, to save time and to quickly get a painting from grayscale to color and all that. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.